Oh, that's a green light. Oh, we're on. <laughs> we're on. All right. All right. Awesome. Yeah. Man, I was hoping he wouldn't see me. He looks over, and I'm throwing a suit jacket on. And he goes, what? Uh, <laughs> yeah, I tripped. Uh, good morning. That was very fun last night, uh, asking my dad casually, hey, are you going to dress up tomorrow? Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah, I probably will, too, then, if you're going to do it. Um, <laughs> I think I worked my way in. Uh, <laughs> so, good morning. <laughs> um, for those of you who are here every week, you normally see me uh, up here doing announcements on Wednesday, or not Wednesdays, sorry, on Sundays. Um, but additionally, I'm here on Wednesdays, too. Uh, we talk about youth students and everything, impact youth. That's my jam. Um, that is Oh, I love it so much. Um, Wednesday, every day of the week. So I'm here every week, twice a week at least, this morning and Wednesday night with all the youth. Uh, like Dove said, we've got a lot of kids in youth group and a lot of unchurched kids in youth group on Wednesday nights. Um, so I, I told uh, Rob, I would talk about the youth convention announcement later. Now is later. Um, for real, youth convention is such an amazing experience especially if you've never been to church before, because a lot of times kids think of church and they just think, oh, it's a bunch of people in suit coats and, uh, um, and uh, telling you you're always wrong. But that's not what youth convention is. A lot of kids go to youth convention and they don't realize going into it they're about to experience an entirely different life that they've ever experienced. They're about to experience Jesus on a scale they've never experienced when they go to youth convention. Most of these kids are unchurched, and their parents don't have the money to send them. And so when we come up here and we ask for money for scholarships to send kids to youth convention, it's not because we just want to go with them and hang out in a hotel and do a Walmart speed run. It's because our heart is for these kids, and our heart is for seeing these kids reach Jesus, and Jesus Amen. reach these children. Amen. So I'm going to reemphasize it. If you want to see a kid go to youth convention and experience Jesus— that's what the money's for. It's not just to send them to a hotel. Ah, uh, you make me cry sometimes. <laughs> I get that from my dad. Ah, <laughs> uh, so, um, Impact Youth. That's what youth group is called on Wednesday nights. Impact Youth. It's all about making your mark. That's the little slogan. Impact. Make your mark. And that's what I want to talk about this morning. I want to talk about making an impact and making your mark. And how do you make an impact? How do you make it with youth? How do you make it with your community, with your workplace, with your friends? Because you have a missions field, and it's time to make an impact with it. And so I have an answer on how you make it, and it's one very simple and very bold answer. <laughs> the answer is step up. And that is what I labeled this morning as. It's just a simple, I didn't do a long-winded, just step up. That's what I want to talk about this morning. Because we all have a missions field that we can be doing more in. This isn't an accusation to anybody. This is, we all have a place in our life where we can do more in for Christ. When I was in 10th grade, I went to camp, another youth event. I went every year, and this night at camp, we were praying at the altar. Super long prayer time, because it's always like hours of prayer. And we're praying at the altar, praying to receive calling in any way. And so me being very stubborn, um, at the start of this, I was like, God, if you're going to call me, you tell me at this altar. And I was like, I kind of want you to call me, so I'm going to stay here until you do it. <laughs> um, <laughs> which is kind of bold. Um, but little did I know that altar call was going to go on for two hours, a whole 120 minutes I was up at that altar just praying, saying, God, if you're going to call me, call me. I need to know it's happening. I need to know it's what you want for me. And so after the two hours of altar call, uh, the director comes up and he says, all right, guys, there's still a few of you guys here. We don't want to take away from this, but we're doing a late night activity in here, so you got to leave. Um, <laughs> so they sent us off to another building. They put worship music, and I was like, well, you didn't do it at the altar, but I'm pretty stubborn, so I'm just going to go to that building just in case. And the moment I walked in that door, I could feel it. The moment I walked in that door, I was like, okay. I hear you loud and clear. We're good? Okay. <laughs> I hear you. 
So at camp is when I felt called. I walked into that second building, and he said, okay, you followed me this far. Here's your answer. And so I had a calling at tenth, in 10th tenth grade to preach to people in 10th grade, which is kind of funny because you're like, yeah, I, I was called to be a youth pastor. I could be your youth pastor right now at camp, and it was really weird. Um, all that to say, I had a calling. And so how do you step up? The first answer is to realize that you are always called. You are called. Sorry, Rob, I really screwed you up with the uh, slides there. <laughs> um, my first is recognize that you're called. Because the reality is, is he might not have called you to be a pastor or a worship leader or a Wednesday night youth leader or children's leader, but if he did, please get a hold of me because I need your help. Um, desperately. Um, he might not have called you to be those things. But he has called you to be other things. He's called you to be a teacher. He's called you to be a firefighter, a plumber, an electrician. He's called you to work retail. He's called you to do whatever it is you're doing. What he's called you to do is to be where you're at right now. He has called you, and I have a verse here for you, uh, 2 Corinthians 5, chapter 20, or sorry, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 20 and 21. It reads, We are therefore Christ ambassadors, as though God were making his appeal through us. We implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. God made him who had no sin to be sin for us, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. And I like this verse for this because it starts off, exactly what I'm talking about. It says, we are therefore Christ ambassadors. We're all Christ ambassadors in this room. If you go to church, you claim to be a Christian, you claim to have Jesus in your heart, you're a Christ ambassador. You represent Christ. You represent him in your actions and in your words and what you do for others. We are called to step up and make an impact in our lives, not just in the church, but in the workplace. We are called to change the world around us because we're Christ ambassadors. God made him who was no sin to be sin for us. He did that for us. So let the world see how grateful we are for it. God said, I'm going to send my perfect and spotless son down for you because you are sinful beings, but I love you. I love you so much, I'm making the greatest sacrifice I could ever make, and I make it for you. And all he asks is that we love him and love people, and that we are Christ ambassadors. <laughs> my text is really big. I told my parents I have eight pages. For those of you listening, I just threw my paper on the ground. Um, <laughs> my text is massive. I have eight pages. I read it all already. Um, <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, sorry. I work with youth. I work with youth. I'm a little goofy sometimes. What can I say? Um, I want to talk about a little bit of what we talk talked about last week. Josh, uh, Josh mentioned... Um, the enemy is already coming for you. So why not have the Holy Spirit on your side? The enemy is already coming for you, so why not have the Holy Spirit on your side? But I want to give you the other side of it. The enemy is coming for everybody. The enemy is after everybody in your life. He's after the people you work with. He's after your family, your husband, your wife, your kids, your grandkids. He is after everybody in your life. He knows no rules. He knows no limits. So why are we not stepping up and making an impact in those people in our lives? Why are we not saying, my son could be going to hell. I know he's going to hell. I know he doesn't have Jesus in his heart. What are we doing? We've got people in our lives that we know that are going to hell. What are we doing? What are we doing to make an impact on the people we care about? We love the people in our lives. The people we love... We owe them to show them God loves you so much. I love a very old uh, nursery rhyme. 
uh, this little light of mine. <laughs> and I love the line in it. It's a question and then an answer. They go, hide it under a bushel? No. Hide it under a bushel? No, we repeat it. Like, let it sink in. I'm not going to take my faith and hide it under a bushel. I'm going to take my faith and let it shine in the world around me. Don't change who you are just because you're around a different group of people. Don't use friend group B personality instead of using friend group A personality when you're in church. Don't let Sunday morning be the only time you experience Jesus. Don't let Sunday morning be the only time where you can raise your hands and praise and jump and shout and then go home and take a three-hour nap and then feel rejuvenated, but then tomorrow go into work and act like nothing ever happened. Let church just be the start of a great week for you. Let church, going into the door Sunday morning saying, God, I want to start my week off with you and make the next day just as good. The devil's not going to blow it out. That's another line in this song. The devil's not going to blow out my faith. He's not going to stop me from showing the world my faith. Oh, you're going to make me cry, Dad. <laughs> oh, preach it, preach it. <laughs> Man. <sighs> the reality is this. We all know somebody in our lives. We all know somebody in our lives that's going to go to hell. If you don't, know somebody, then you're not evangelizing. If the only people you ever hang out with are your church friends and you never step out into the real world to say, this world is broken, it's messed up, and I've got Jesus in my heart, I want to go fix it. If you're never doing that, what are we doing? What are we doing in this room if we're not trying to make disciples of the world? So step out. Step up to the challenge that is set before you, that the world is messed up and it needs Jesus. Step up to it and say, I'm willing to step up into the uncomfortable right now. I'm willing to do whatever it takes because I know somebody in my life that I care about that's going to hell. I don't want them to go to hell. I, wanna, I don't want to spend every minute on earth with them. I want to spend every minute of eternity with them. I don't want to just spend what I have right now with you. I want to spend every moment of existence with you because I love you that much. Pray that God would somehow show you, some, somehow show you to use your talents because we all have talents. I kind of forced myself to learn how to play piano and now here I am playing piano for you guys. <laughs> I've played saxophone. I did theater in high school. If you see me right now and you're like, wow, that guy is talking with his hands. I, it's just how I was taught. I, just, I speak with my hands. I'm expressionate. What can I say? God, show me how to use my talent. Show me how to use my abilities to further your kingdom. Because, God, you've called me to this missions field. Not because I'm qualified, but you're going to qualify me because you called me. God, I have these abilities. Show me how to use them. He doesn't qualify you when you're called. He qualifies you. Sorry, I said that backwards. He doesn't call the qualified. He qualifies the called. <laughs> That's what it is. He makes you a good disciple. My second point <laughs> is if you want to step up, you have to pray boldly. We can't just pray meek prayers and whisper our prayers. God, I hope you do really good things in my life. God's not called you to be timid. He's not called you to be timid. He's called you to be ferocious and fierce for him. 1 John 5.14. This is the confidence we have in approaching God. That if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. So pray boldly. If it's in his will, he's going to hear you and he's going to do it. Don't go, God, I really want 20 bucks right now to go buy a large pizza for a youth group. Um, if, if you could do that, that, if it's in his will, he'll supply, he'll demand. He might, not be, he might say, no, you don't need a large pizza just for yourself. You don't need that. Um, but if it's in his will, God hears it and he answers and he listens to you. 
So pray that everything you ever want and dream of is in his will. Pray that, God, I want nothing more than for your will to be done. So let every desire of my heart be your will. God, let everything in my heart be just exactly what you want for my life. Don't let me diverge. Don't let me divulge. God, I want nothing but your will. The easiest prayer you could ever pray. Holy Spirit, do what you do. Amen. Holy Spirit, do what you want to do. Have your way. Lord, do what you want in my life. I don't want to change control. If I ever make sense, it's not me. It's God who's saying it. <laughs> because some of y'all know me, and you knew me in high school. You're like, yeah, he was really goofy, and he was never serious. Yeah, and I still got a little goofy in me. But if I ever make complete and utter sense, and you're like, wow, that is everything I need to hear, I'm not the one saying it. God's the one saying it to you. Let God work through me. God, don't use me. God, work through me. Are you letting your circumstances de decide how bold your prayers are? Are you saying, God, I'm really down right now, and I'm just not feeling great. If you could just help me feel good today, that'd be great. That's a step. That's a start. But pray boldly. God, I want you to take away my sadness. I want you to take away my pain. God, don't let me live in a life of sadness. I want everything from you. Don't just give me a taste of your love. Pour out your love over me. God, don't just let my love for you just be a little bit. No, let me love you with all my heart. And God, just don't give me a little. I want it all. Be a five-year-old in your prayers. I want it all. I want everything you have to offer for me, God. God, don't just help me fight my addiction. Take it away. God, don't just, oh, man, I'm getting into it. <laughs> I love it. I get more than 10 minutes to talk to you guys. <laughs> oh, I love it. I could go on and on. <laughs> but I won't. I won't keep you here. I won't keep you here forever, I promise. You got to change the words you use when you pray. You got to stop saying, God, I hope you do this for me. Telling God you hope he does it for you is saying you, you're okay if you don't believe he might. No, God, I believe you'll do this for me. God, I believe you'll cure my mom of cancer. God, I believe you'll help my dad get through his sickness. God, I believe you'll help me through my addiction. Don't pray with the option to cop out. Don't pray, God, if you want to use me, that's okay. No, God, put me in a situation where I have to have you in my life. Put me in a situation where if I don't have you, I don't know what I'm supposed to do. And we got to stop asking God to use us. And that's a really bold statement right there, because you're like, what? That's like what we always pray. That's what you do. Tools get used. Silverware gets used. Dishes get used. Phones get used. You pick them up. You use them. You put them down until next time. You pick them up. You drill a few screws in the wall. You set it down, and you don't think about it till the next time you need to drill screws in the wall. I don't want God to treat me like a tool. I want God to say, Elijah, I want to work through you. I don't want to use you. I want to work through you. I'm not going to put you up there, use you, and set you aside and never use you again. I'm not going to put you up in front of the youth every Wednesday night, say, preach a message, go home and go to bed, and don't worry until next week. No, I want to work through you every day, every hour, 24-7. We're on the clock 24-7 with Christ. There's never a time when we're not being an example. People get used. People get used for so many terrible things in this world. This world is messed up and broken, and people get used. I don't want God to use me. I want God to work through me. I want, I want to be able to say, God, I want to do everything in your glory. Put me in a situation where you can just work through me. Put me in front of a church. Put me at a pulpit and just speak through me. Let me just turn, go on autopilot for you. Let me just let you speak. If it, if it makes sense, it ain't me, it's God. That was a lot of text on that page. <laughs> the third thing I want to talk about in stepping up is standing out. You got to stand out if you want to step up. Because if you walk into the world and people can't tell you're a Christian, to the world you're not a Christian. If the world can't tell that you got Jesus in your heart, what are you doing? Don't hide it under a bushel. Let it shine. Let the world know 
unashamedly, I got Christ in my heart, and I want you to have it too. The devil's coming after you, but I'm coming after you too. I got Jesus on my side, and he's coming for you, man. You better be ready. Because <laughs> we're about to change your life for the better. If you want to step up, you've got to stand out. We have to be willing to embrace the uncomfortable situations that we're going to get put in when we make that challenge and when we take it. When we say, I want to make an impact and step up, we have to be able to say, I can take it. I can take the uncomfortable situations. I love the verse, Philippians 4.13. It's a great verse, and the context of it makes it more important. The verse is, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And that's a great verse, because you can, but the context of it is what makes it so much more valuable. Because Paul is not just saying, I can do everything through Christ who strengthens me. I can deadlift 500 pounds and run a marathon. He's writing this when he's in prison. He's saying, I am a prisoner. I'm being tortured. I'm not being fed enough. I'm not getting enough water. But I'll do it anyway because Christ has given me the strength to get through it. I'll bear the uncomfortable situations that God's put me in right now because I know he's given me the strength to get through it. You gotta stand out. You gotta make the uncomfortable feel comfortable for yourself. Break the normal. Right. Isn't that weird? I'm not behind the pulpit anymore. I'm in front of it. It's a little uncomfortable. I'm like, ooh, my legs are shaking. What about this? What? Ooh. Step back, step back. You're, uh, you're in the no zone. Is it not weird if you preach to the entire church right next to the church? Step out into the world, because guess what? The world needs Jesus. Every part of the world, front and back, left, right, everywhere, needs Jesus. So why are we not stepping out into the uncomfortable to say, you need Jesus, I've got Jesus, I have Jesus. It's that simple. You do it once or twice, and then you're like, oh, it's not that embarrassing. I'm used to it. Sometimes the hardest step is the first one, because you have to say, this is going to be weird. Okay, that was weird. Let me take another step. Okay, it wasn't as weird as the first time. I'm kind of getting my ground a little bit. Okay. Okay, well, now I'm, I'm fine now. I've, I've done this a couple times. I've talked to a couple people about my faith. Uh, you know, they know I'm a Christian now. Now, now just start going with them. Just start walking. Yeah. Christ is always moving. Yeah. The question always gets asked, are your friends pulling you away? Or bringing you closer to Christ. And the reality is, is you can't answer, well, they're not doing either. Because Christ is always moving. Christ is always moving. And unless your friends are pushing him closer, they're keeping you away. If God's moving forward in your life, but your friends aren't helping you move forward with, they're pulling you away. The reality is, God is always moving. We don't like to be uncomfortable. It's weird. It's awkward. Kind of makes you feel weird inside. You're like, uh, I don't know if I want to talk to that person about my faith. That's probably a conversation that won't go my way. Okay. Do it. Like, nobody, nobody learned how to do math the first day of school. You had to learn what numbers were first. Okay? So, yeah, maybe they don't come to Christ the moment you talk to them. But guess what? Now they know. Now they know you're a Christian, and guess what? Now they know, oh, he's got something in him. He's got a fire in him. Have a fire in you. That's not in my notes. Have a fire in you for Christ. Reach the world, step up, and make an impact. You all know somebody in your life that you don't want to talk about to Christ. You all have an annoying coworker. That's fine. Sometimes people can be annoying. And if you are like, no, I don't have an annoying co-worker, sorry to break it to you. Um, you might be, um, <laughs> no, 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 I'm just playing, I'm just playing. Oh, I got a mess up here. Uh, no, you've all got a person in your life that you're like, man, I'm not a fan of you. But let me remind you about what I said earlier. The devil's coming after everybody. Guess what? I don't care that he's annoying to you. The devil's after him. What are you going to do about it? Yeah, I know. There might be a pain. Guess what? 
be a pain back. Be like, hey, Jesus loves you so much, and I'm going to tell you every morning, every day. <laughs> right? Don't let the world shove itself down your throat. Be like, no, my Jesus is in control here. Get out of here. No, no, I'm in charge of this. I'm in charge of my situation. Dad, I think I'm doing good. I got, I'm already at 20 minutes. I, I got advice from my dad last night. Really funnily, he didn't even know I was preaching. He goes, you know, if you give like a 20-minute sermon, that'll be fine. Because, you know, people are okay if you have to leave early, but they're not real fond of it when they stay late. Well, here's the thing with staying late. Were you listening? <laughs> if you were listening to the sermon and it was good and it went over late, it's because it was good. Focus up. Sunday morning is like your full refill for the rest of the week, so listen up. These 35, 40, 53-minute sermons that you might have to endure, there's, what, there's what's going to get you through the week. <laughs> I love you, Josh. <laughs> Uh, I got a couple of verses for you here in, in here as well. Uh, Acts 28 and 31. Proclaiming the kingdom of God and teaching about the Lord Jesus Christ with all the boldness and without hindrance. Are you preaching the Lord God with boldness? Are you getting up on a Walmart conveyor belt and saying, hey, Jesus is here for you. Jesus is here for you. Come see me and we'll pray for you. True story. I know somebody who's done that before. It was Black Friday. And him and his buddy were like, you feeling God talk to you right now? Yeah, I am. What's he saying? I think we got to get up on that Walmart conveyor belt and say, like, let's bring people to Christ. Okay. <laughs> we're here. We're Christians. We want to pray for you to receive Jesus this morning. Come to us and pray. Receive Jesus this morning. <laughs> That's awkward. That's uncomfortable. They're like, you know, Walmart, uh, here goes, hey, can you get off my conveyor belt? <laughs> They're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. But that's not where their story ended. Because their story was not yet over. It had just begun. Because a year later, those two guys went to summer camp as counselors. These were adults. They went to summer camp as counselors. And a couple students saw him and came up, running up to him, like, hey, are you the Walmart conveyor belt guy? <laughs> and he's like, yeah, that was me. The kid goes, my friends and I watched you do that, and we wanted to do that for the last year. We've been doing everything we can to be like that for the past year. We just brought my youth group to camp, and there's 10 new students in my youth group, because we saw you do that, and it inspired us. God's going to call you to the uncomfortable, and you, don't under, and you might not understand why sometimes. And sometimes he'll call you to the uncomfortable, you'll feel like nothing's happened, but you just don't understand it yet. You don't have a full grasp. God is without time. God is outside of time. We have to live through it. God says, you're going to do this uncomfortable thing for me. You're not going to understand it yet. But when you do, it's going to be awesome. You're going to stand on a Walmart conveyor belt. Now, if God's not telling you to do that, you probably shouldn't do it. Um, you're going to stand on a Walmart conveyor belt and preach my name. And you're going to inspire kids to do the same and impact schools and impact their families. Let me remind you, half of our youth group does not go to church. Half of the kids on a Wednesday night does not go to church. I don't know about Construction Zone, but I'm willing to bet it's about the same. This church on a Wednesday night is filled with about almost 100 students, maybe. And about 50% of them do not live in a Christian household. They do not come to church on a Sunday morning, go out to eat in the afternoon, take a nap, and have a loving family. 50% of the kids in this room on a Wednesday night need Jesus. It's not just a Wednesday night church activity. No, it's a Wednesday night revival. Wednesday nights is an opportunity for kids and youth to experience Jesus because it's the only place where they can experience Jesus. We are a church that needs to make an impact in this community. 
We are a church that needs to do everything we can to tell kids, Jesus loves you, I love you, please just come in these doors and accept him. Are these doors open? Are your doors open? When somebody asks you a question about your faith, do you have an answer for them? The other verse I have for you is Acts 4, 31. After they prayed, the place where they were meeting was shaken, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and spoke the word of God boldly. If there was another word I could have changed this message's title to, it would have been bold. Just bold. We need to be bold, church. We can't just let the world, we just can't let the world decide what we do. We're Christians and we have every right and we have every, no, I can't even think of the word, I'm so into it. We have everything we need on our side. We have God on our side. We need to step out. We need to step up and say, I want to make a difference in this community. I want to make a difference in Cairo, Michigan, Tuscola County, the thumb of Michigan, Michigan itself. I want to make an impact on the world. You may believe that Cairo, Michigan is all you'll be confined to with your ministry. No, the internet exists. You preach a crazy message to some kid, and somebody's recording it. Next thing you know, all of California has gone revived. They're all revived. <laughs> because they saw your message from Cairo, Michigan. You can make an impact on the world, and it doesn't have to be small. God, don't make my impact on the world be small. God, change the world because you worked through me on a Sunday morning. Change the world because you worked through me on a Tuesday afternoon at school. God's called you to be a teacher. He's called you to be a plumber. He's called you to be an electrician. It doesn't matter where you're at. You have a missions field. I want to remind you that this morning is not just about reaching young people. And it's not just a message for young people. Because if you're not dead, you're not done. <laughs> You've got all of eternity to relax. If you're here, you're not done. So, God, work through me to make an impact on my community and on the world. And if I can have the band come up, but don't play yet. I'm doing something special. Um, there's a fourth thing that's required in stepping up and making an impact. And I'm going to do something a little weird, a little weird. Everybody be ready. Youth pastor's doing something weird. The fourth thing you need to do to step up is to step out. You need to say, I'm going to take that challenge and I'm going to take that call to make an impact. And this is the weird thing for you. <laughs> because it's uncomfortable. It's uncomfortable to step up and step out. But we're in our comfort zone right now, are we not? Sunday morning's my comfort zone. I'm in the seat that I sit in every week. That's fine, I do it too. <laughs> but we're in the comfort zone right now. And when we step out those doors, we're in the world again. So if you want to make an impact in the world, you have to step up, you have to step out. And so we're still in our comfort zone. So before the band plays and tugs at your heartstrings, melody, can you step up right now, step out right now, and join me up here to make a difference in the world? Before the band has tugged at your heartstrings, can you say, I want to change my community and make an impact? I want to change the world around me because I've got loved ones who need Jesus. I've got people in my life who are going to hell if I don't do something about it, if I don't say something to them. Can that be you this morning? You guys can start playing. Don't worry. We're, we're up here. We've answered the call. If that's your prayer this morning, just make it your prayer. God, pull me into the uncomfortable and guide me through it. God, give me the strength. God, give us the strength this morning to impact our community, Lord. Impact our youth and our schools and our workplaces. God, that you would just show the world that you love me so much that I would step out into the uncomfortable for you. God, I would step out into the uncomfortable for you and I would embarrass myself in your name, God, because you've given me the strength to feel uncomfortable and be okay. God, put me in a situation where I can change the lives of students in this community. God, put me in a situation where all I want is you. God, we pray this in your name. Just pray it out. This morning, you stepped up and you said, I'm going to answer that call. Because you realize you've been called. That you have a mission field. 
and it doesn't look like anybody else's. You have your own missions field, and you've stepped up this morning to say, I'm going to make an impact in it. So this morning, we're an army rising up for Jesus. Yes, Lord. Because we're going to make a difference in the world around us. And we're going to make a difference in our communities, our workplaces, our schools, and our lives. Yes, Lord. And our families. Yes, Lord. This morning, I'm going to pray you out. Hallelujah. And I'm just going to pray that the Holy Spirit would do what he would do in your life. Yes. He would work through you. He would put you in a situation where this is my opportunity, Lord. Hallelujah. Preach the gospel through me. Yes, Lord. Jesus. Lord, this morning, we thank you. We thank you for putting us up to this, God. For putting us in a situation where we have to step up. Lord, we thank you that you've given us so many blessings and miracles along the way, God. Yes, and that you've Lord. given us the strength to be bold for you. Yes, God, Lord. we pray that in the weeks to come and in the months to come, we would be bold for you. That yes, we would Lord. see this That's church grow because yes, we've been bold in professing our faith, Lord. Us, Make Lord. it so we have to put more rows of chairs in this church because we're reaching more people. Yes, Lord. God, we pray that you would see a revival in this community and on our schools and our workplaces through us, Lord. Do it through us. Work through us that we can change the world around us, Lord. Lord, I pray that every person in this room today is filled with you and they are bold and strengthened through you, Lord. I pray that this morning would be the start of a great week and then next week we would come back on fire. We would leave these doors not ready for a nap, but ready to preach more of you, Lord. Set us on fire, God. God, we pray that this morning would be the start of a wonderful thing, Lord. And Lord, we pray it in your name. Amen. Amen.